I'm your cult boyfriend talking about two films starring Gene Arthur. We're talking about um, 1939's Howard Hawks film, Only Angels Have Wings, as well as the 1948 Billy Wilder picture, A Foreign Affair. These movies uh, are really interesting for me as a point of analysis, because I'm obsessed with Jean Arthur. I think that she's philosophically fascinating. And um, <laughs> my, my, my spiritual Hollywood twin with all of her inferiority complexes and nervousness and awkwardness and her self-doubt plagued by, by having wasps in her belly whenever she'd get nervous and throwing up after each and every scene. Um, the inferiority complex led to paranoia. Um, and always, always thinking, thinking of herself as such a small figure, and yet when you see her on screen, she's the protector of the American inner child, and my protector as well, all of our protectors. Gene Arthur is so important. And these are really interesting films because she is juxtaposed in both of them against, um, <laughs> against an unstoppable erotic force of nature. Um, she has rivals in both of these films for, for the main, uh, actor's affections. She has a, a romantic rival in both of these films, Rita Hayworth in Only Angels Have Wings and Marlena Dietrich in A Foreign Affair. Both of those women are unreasonably attractive, like, to the point that I would have no idea what to do with them. I have I have no idea. I couldn't even fathom such such fucking beauty. And it's really unreasonable to be pitted against those two in any scenario, especially on the silver screen. So let's talk about Only Angels Have Wings first, because it's actually the film that I like less. I think A Foreign Affair is great. I think Only Angels Have Wings is actually not a good movie. I don't like it. I really don't. Uh, Howard Hawks is ultra masculine. I mean, he 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 he's male oriented to the core, and he's he's a master. He's a master. But uh, like my favorite films by him are Red River, Rio Bravo, and The Big Sleep. And I feel like in those films, he um, he nails it. He he understands not only masculine uh, virtues but also masculine fragility or even masculine frauds or or like like a. Um, a new form of a sensitive masculinity and only angels have wings it's uh it's so macho that it's eye roll inducing um gene arthur is my favorite part of this film and i think she's very funny in it she offers levity but uh howard hawks simply does not understand how to film her but from howard hawks's point of view he said that arthur didn't do anything that he told her to do he even said uh, Gene, I feel like you're the one person in my entire career that I never helped. You never listened to me. He wanted her to be Lauren Bacall. He wanted her to be that kind of erotic cinema cool. And that's simply not Gene Arthur. Um, Gene Arthur, since she suffered from a massive inferiority complex, would later apologize to the director and be like, you were right, I should have listened to you, but that's just her insecurities talking. I think that she was perfect in this film. I honestly think Cary Grant was the one who was miscast. A lot of people thought Gene Arthur was, but I... I don't like Cary Grant in this kind of kind of rigid and constricted um, hyper masculine role. I like him best in comedies where he's allowed to be a little goofy. And here, I just I it's just an extremely unlikable character. And um, Gene Arthur confided in a friend uh, late in life and said like. <sighs> Cary Grant, sure, he's attractive, but he tried to uh, upstage me all of the time. Like, went out of his way to do so. We'd, we'd start a normal scene, and then he would literally stand in front of the camera, blocking me out of frame. He, he tried his best to upstage me at every turn. This could be Gene Arthur's paranoia talking, or it could be, could be truthful, and I think it's a bit of both, honestly. And Hawk's clearly had a better relationship with Cary Grant, having just worked with him on bringing up baby uh, directly before this, so he probably favored him over her. And speaking of favoring someone over Gene Arthur in Only Angels Have Wings, Rita Hayworth is her rival here. If, if you don't know, watch the video I did about Gilda, 
I can't even comprehend how beautiful Rita Hayworth is. She's she's um, uh, otherworldly, right? And I agree with Jean Arthur. It's an unreasonable comparison. She refused to pose for um, publicity stills next to Rita Hayworth because she's like, me and that beautiful girl, are you trying to ruin my career? Uh, they actually shunned each other on set. They, they, they would hardly interact with each other, but they were both actually truly shy in a way. I mean, Jean Arthur was, was hypersensitively shy. Um, Rita Hayworth was probably just intimidated because it was her first film. Um, but they, but they shunned each other, stayed away from each other. Um, God, Jean Arthur thought that Harry Cohn was trying to like ruin her. And he kind of was in a way. I mean, Harry Cohn is kind of a bastard, the head of Columbia at the time. Uh, Rita Hayworth ended up taking over, uh, like taking the, the, the throne of Columbia away from Jean Arthur. And Harry Cohn was, was awful though. I mean, behind the scenes, Harry Cohn was trying to sleep with Rita Hayworth and Rita Hayworth's then husband actually wanted her to do it to further her career. She didn't. Uh, but but that's the kind of Hollywood that we're dealing with at the time, where women are definitely seen as commodities. And Jean Arthur was was extremely paranoid, probably rightfully so, about being upstaged not only by Cary Grant, literally by by blocking her out of frame, and also by Rita Hayworth simply by existing and being so otherworldly beautiful. I would feel um, unreasonably small next to someone that beautiful. Rita Hayworth is very good in this film because all she has to do is, she's like Marilyn Monroe, man. Like, all she has to do is, like, look and just, just stand there, man. I, I, I mean, she does a lot more than just stand there. I'm just saying that all she would actually have to do is just exist, and I would be, ugh. like, the second she showed up in the film, I went, oh, my jaw dropped like a fucking cartoon character. Jean Arthur is very good in this film, and I don't really appreciate uh, Howard Hawks kind of saying that, um... That she was terribly miscast or that he didn't quite like working with her she he just didn't understand her frank capra understood her fine george stevens understood her fine um they knew how to express and amplify her best comedic qualities and she's the best part of this film in fact the best parts of this film are mostly her engaging with thomas mitchell who i love thomas mitchell mostly from frank capra films and they had already done like mr smith goes to washington together they have a wonderful chemistry always have gene arthur and thomas mitchell wonderful lovely people but overall i couldn't i couldn't be bothered to care less about the scenario in this film this hyper masculine story of aviation um i kind of find aviation metaphors of uh, for masculinity kind of boring um no matter what and uh i know that hawks is kind of semi-autobiographical in, in, a, in a small way or probably kind of I'm kind of probably being petty in a larger in a large way. This is kind of uh, autobiographical, so it is a personal film for him. I just personally think it's really underwhelming and uninteresting. Quite unlike a foreign affair, I think Billy Wilder is an awesome director, actually. But on this film too, Jean Arthur is her rival is Marlena Dietrich, and. If you don't know how much I love Marlena Dietrich, watch the idol worship video I did about her. I think she is also unreasonably, unfathomably, incomprehensibly gorgeous, beautiful, sexy, whatever. Like, everyone does. I'm not alone in this. Like, everyone can agree that Marlena Dietrich is hypnotic. And, uh, <laughs> once again, Jean Arthur felt that, uh, that it was, she was being attacked. And, but she kind of was in this scenario. Over here, I might say, like, Rita Hayworth didn't actually do anything antagonistic towards her. A lot of it was paranoia, and a lot of it was seeing how Howard Hawks acted when, um, Rita Hayworth was on set, and probably how most of the, the, the male crew acted as well. They probably changed their demeanor and behavior and kind of just gawked and, like, all, like, stupefied mutes. But Rita Hayworth herself didn't really do anything antagonistic towards her. Marlena Dietrich was kind of a bitch to her, but Jean Arthur was also incredibly antagonistic towards Marlena Dietrich from the get-go. Um, <laughs> she had such a such an antipathy, such a hatred for for the famed German actress that um, <laughs> when when she was pressured late in life to like she harbored it forever, like pressured late in life to write a memoir. She did so, and but she only wrote like five pages just of vitriol about Marlena Dietrich and showed it to her friend, and she never capitalized Marlene's name. And he's like, okay, maybe you shouldn't write a book, Gene. Maybe just, maybe just chill. Maybe just, maybe just relax. Um, uh, <laughs> in contrast, Marlena never cared about Gene Arthur. Uh, people like uh, Gene Arthur would try to get all the um, 
all the details about her like kind of reclusive but um fabled uh private um life and once uh, Marlena Dietrich, um, someone brought up Jean Arthur towards her later in her life, and she couldn't care less. She couldn't care less at all. But on the set, uh, Jean Arthur definitely felt that um, since Wilder and Marlena knew each other already, uh, and like Wilder would go visit her in her dressing room and try her German cooking, they would speak German to each other. Uh, she felt like really excluded, and she felt that Wilder was probably, um, probably uh, uh, giving her all of the best close ups, all the best shots, which wasn't true. Billy Wilder was a pretty generous filmmaker, and she even apologized towards our, to, to, to Wilder later in life. In 1988, she watched the film on television and said, it, It's really a love film it's actually very good and that's an apology I buy because this film is extremely good and Jean Arthur gets to be great like the best part of only angels has have wings or uh, like the first 30 minutes where Arthur is the center of the film and she sings a wonderful song um, that she plays on the piano and Cary Grant's just hollering about peanuts and chanting and singing and that's a lovely moment this film is kind of completely um, intoxicated with that kind of feeling. She sings a wonderful song about Iowa at a cabaret bar. Um, Marlena is this like like sultry, seductive, Nazi, like femme fatale type of woman. Um, I love her so much in this film. The best parts of this film are the scenes with Jean Arthur and Marlena Dietrich. They have a wonderful chemistry together. It's just certain parts of the script must have completely damaged Jean Arthur's already, like, um, non-existent ego, basically. She was just full of insecurities. That's all Jean Arthur was, was a ball of nerves. And there are lines in the script where Marlena Dietrich is saying that her face looks like a scrubbed kitchen floor. Uh, imagine, imagine this, even if it's just acting. And, and since they had a rivalry and an, an attack, uh, like, there were kind of, um, an animosity that was shared between them. It wasn't exactly acting. Imagine having Marlena Dietrich, perfect, like chiseled, beautiful, porcelain-like, come up to your face and this on camera scrutinize your eyebrows, scrutinize your lips, scrutinize the way that you do your hair, or rather how you don't do your hair. Imagine having Marlena Dietrich come up to you and be like, you're disgusting and I'm a goddess. You would, <laughs> you would feel infinitesimal. You would feel like nothing. And these lines seem to have been at least rewritten um, to specifically attack Arthur's physical shortcomings, of which she was already hyper insecure about to begin with. But the film is lovely. Those two together, there is antagonism running through their scenes, but it kind of makes the scenes hypercharged. But there's something so delightful about seeing Dietrich and Arthur. Their, um, their chemistry together is extraordinary. Uh, and and I think Wilder actually did film Jean Arthur uh, stunningly. And but both women were in their late forties at the time they made this film. And it's also awesome seeing a Hollywood film that that eroticizes and champions um, uh, female sexuality at, at at a later age. Of course, Jean Arthur was like hyper private and lied about her age till the bitter end. Um, so no one really knew she was in her late forties, but but she was. And like I said, the, the, the chemistry between the two of them is, is outrageous. But I find these two films uh, fascinating because they're pitting someone who has the, the, probably the most um, infamous inferiority complex in Hollywood against um, people who are so unreasonably beautiful. I can only describe them in divine terms, in divine ways. Like they're goddesses, Marlena and Rita, they're, they're goddesses. Uh, that is so unfair fortunate and unreasonable, and yet in the case of A Foreign Affair, we have an intoxicatingly dazzling uh, result. This is a completely delightful film. It's not like a masterful film, but I will rewatch it and rewatch it and rewatch it simply to see Marlena and Jean Arthur take pot shots at each other on film, uh, or, or just engage with each other. Marlena's whole goal is to... Um, Take the take the 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 rigid stiff um, innocence of Jean Arthur and and corrupt it and corrupt it in in like a cabaret Berlin kind of style a Weimar style and I love seeing Dietrich take that the innocence of Jean Arthur which is now inherent because of her films with Capra and attempt to corrupt it by getting her drunk at cabaret bars and getting her um, involved in this kind of 
a demented uh, lover's uh, triangle. It's awesome. It is so cool. She's great. She's great. She really takes control. And Jean Arthur, um, since, since she does have an inferiority complex, the um, the dynamic between the two of them is that Marlena is this kind of kind of cruel teacher, and and she is this this um, naive uh, pupil. And they're both beautiful, but seeing them together is that's fucking movie magic dude that that's amazing um a foreign affair is great only angels have wings which i just apparently threw on the floor only angels have wings is not good i don't i don't enjoy the film i really don't um howard hawks Howard Hawks is hit or miss with me like completely but when he hits oh my god i can write um dissertations about how much I love the, the pictures of Hawks that I love, but this one is just simply, simply underwhelming and not incredibly likable. There's not a good um, filmic character to it. I don't like it. But uh, A Foreign Affair is fascinating, and both films are completely captivating because it takes this woman with a very famous inferiority complex and a lot of insecurities, shyness, and awkwardness in real life, and pits her against people who would um, make even the most powerful people in the world stutter and stammer and lose track of themselves and she had to maintain her composure and uh it kind of triggered some of the the inferior qualities that she felt um it kind of triggered those to be to be malformed into more paranoid qualities and we can see how she acted and kind of lashed out uh at, at, at things that that i mean she i think she understood it but at things that she couldn't um she couldn't help. She couldn't control. Uh, Jean Arthur is just a very human woman, a very human celebrity, the actress nobody knew. Uh, she's just a very human person full of all of these faults. And uh, unlike people like Rita Hayworth and Marlena Dietrich, I can relate to the paranoia suffused jealousy uh, that, that comes from a, a deep amount of insecurities that I just uh, that I've been talking about, I guess, for the last 15 minutes or so. I can relate to that kind of um, that, 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 that kind of feeling, those kinds of immense dreadful feelings of doubt. I can relate to Jean Arthur's philosophy or her psychological makeup so much. And I think that and I think that that's really valuable because she is that protector of the inner child. And the inner child is a hypersensitive thing. The inner child is 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 is, uh, is an innocent thing um by by design by by blood. Um Jean Arthur I, I understand her so much and and by watching films in these where she does where she does have to stand up against goddesses and by the way I mean win uh, narratively in both situations there's a part of yourself that's working through it as well um at least me someone who like highly identifies with the roles of Jean Arthur and um, I love seeing the philosophy that she brings to every film that she's in um, you're working through something within yourself as well, and I think that that's fascinating. Uh, you're working through the insecurities. I mean, a jealousy only comes from insecure people. It doesn't come from people who are confident. And um, so it's no wonder that Jean Arthur uh, had such an extreme amount of jealousy and antipathy. Um, well, I mean, well, not maybe. Uh, animosity is probably more, more accurate. Uh, she had such hatred. Uh, she spewed such venom, at least towards Marlena Dietrich, and um, she just didn't trust Rita Hayworth being on set. Uh, you can you can relate to it so much, and of course she felt that way because she suffered from an actual inferiority complex. And um, Hollywood doesn't know how to handle those personalities because those personalities are are unique in Hollywood. Those personalities don't exist in Hollywood. At least the inferiority complex part of there's a lot of jealous people in Hollywood. There's a lot of insecure people in Hollywood, but none more so than Jean Arthur ever was. And Jean Arthur didn't want anything to do with anyone. And uh, because the jealousy didn't come from egotism, it came from an extreme lack of it. And that's the, and that's the tragic comedy of Jane Arthur.
So hope you like my video about only angels have wings and a foreign affair. I enjoyed talking about them. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, share this video around. Um, thanks for watching your cult boyfriend. It's always a pleasure talking to you.